I've been trying to explain a natural theology that would be accessible to any human being and really any species, any intelligent species. But sometimes I find myself talking about my particular history, my particular relationship to Christianity and the Catholic Church. And that's brought up some thoughts that I'm going to talk about tonight, but which may be of only, only of interest to Christians. So let's begin. Who's re who killed Jesus? Who is responsible for the death of Jesus? Well, first of all, let's do some very brief backstory. In Christianity, the, uh, the sin of Adam and Eve got them evicted from the Garden of Eden and got all humanity. The gates of heaven were closed, so, so human beings could not die and go to heaven. And the gates of heaven were reopened only by the sacrificial, atoning death of Jesus. That reopened the gates of heaven. So the death was necessary for reasons which could be explored, that uh, the death was the way that God chose to reopen the gates of heaven. Okay. Now what we're going to talk about, I'm basing on what the Bible says. And the reason I mention that is the Bible's accounts can be disputed. Some people even go so far as to decide that Jesus is entirely mythological, not a real person. But we're going to accept what the Bible says. But as you'll see, I'll put a somewhat unusual spin maybe on what the Bible says. We'll get to that. So the Bible has no disagreement that the Romans put Jesus to death. So are they responsible? I mean, they did it. But according to the Bible's account, Jesus was taken before Herod, the puppet king that the Romans had installed, and Herod could find, find no fault with Jesus. And then Jesus was taken before Pontius Pilate, the real Roman ruler in that area, and Pontius Pilate could find no fault with him, and he uh, supposedly there was a custom of releasing a prisoner at that time of year, which was the Passover. So Pontius Pilate said to the Jewish crowd, would you rather have Barabbas or Jesus? And supposedly they said, give us Barabbas. And then he said, what should I do with your king, Jesus? And they said, crucify him. We have no king but Caesar. And even this line over here, which is only found in Matthew, has had a horrible historical consequences. Jewish people were called Christ killers. There were times when they were massacred, whole villages. It was really terrible. So are they responsible for his death? Well, I would say no, and there, there's two reasons for that. First of all, did they have good evidence that he was who he said he was? Now, you might remember that the Magi, the three wise men, visited Jesus on his birth. Magi were priests of a foreign religion, and if you read the Old Testament, gods of foreign religions are considered false gods. Uh, there's no line in the Bible that I know of that says, well, you call God that name and we call God Yahweh, but they're really the same God. Nothing like that. So this would be like in a very Christian area, if a, if a young boy was born and Hindu yogis or Tibetan monks came to visit him, that wouldn't impress the local populace. Now, secondly, we have Jesus apparently breaking the laws of the Sabbath. It can be argued whether it was really breaking the laws, but yet yeah, the, the Jewish leaders said he's breaking the law. And this was of no small consequence because in the Torah, in the Old Testament, if you break any of God's laws, sometimes you were there was drastic repercussions. I'll talk about the story of the census of King David just as an illustration. King David decided to take a census of Israel. And, and when he was done, a prophet told him that he had offended Yahweh. And he was given, David was given the choice of three penalties, three years of famine. I mean, the whole land is punished for what David did? Okay. The second choice was three months of fleeing from your enemies. Well, at least David himself would be paying the penalty. The third was three days of plague. David chose three days of plague. The Lord sent a plague on Israel, and 70,000 people died. So this is not a God that you want to offend. And there's Jesus going around claiming to be the Son of God and breaking Sabbath laws. It was very natural for Jewish leaders to say, you know, this guy is trouble. Oh, by the way, why did David take the census? Well, there's two accounts in the Bible. One of them says Yahweh himself incited David to take the census. 
And the other one says Satan incited David to take the census. So David didn't even do it of his own free will. And yet 70,000 people were killed. So if Jesus is going around breaking Sabbath laws and declaring himself son of God, it's no wonder that the Jewish leaders uh, didn't like that. Now, it might be said, well, what about prophecy? Wasn't Jesus prophesied? And in another clip, this one here, I talked about how perhaps the foremost, quote, prophecy of the Bible isn't a prophecy. You can go see that clip. But basically, behold, the virgin shall conceive and cause and bear a son is a mistranslation of the original Hebrew was a young woman has conceived. Through various, uh, there's, um, here's some of the history, but Matthew made it a prophecy, but I doubt if any Jewish person before Matthew ever considered that a prophecy, given that it said the young woman has conceived. But that's uh, something you can look into if you're interested in. What about the miracles of Jesus? Well, there's a story in the Old Testament, in the Torah, where Moses and Aaron go before the Pharaoh and Moses kills all the fish in the Nile and the, the, the river smells bad. And the Egyptian magicians do the same thing. Now, how they killed the fish that were already dead is another story. But the point is, just because someone could do miracles, if you read the Old Testament, if the Torah, doesn't mean that they're of God, hardly. So Jesus did some miracles. And besides, even if the Jewish people should have known, what about forgive them for they know not what they do? Well, if they should have known, did they know? There's a lot of reasons, a lot of you know, details which would say, no, they couldn't be sure. And they might have feared that another plague would come. So I don't think they can be said to be responsible. Now, were the Romans responsible? Well, did the Romans have reason to kill Jesus? And this is interesting because, as I mentioned when I did the thing about the Our Father, how the line, and lead us not into temptation, is something that a lot of people repeated and never thought about. When I say, did the Romans have any reason, any compelling reason to execute Jesus? Some Christians don't know what I'm going to say, but a lot I think would say, no, Jesus was pure and kind and gentle and good. Uh, you know, why would they execute him? Well, Palm Sunday? He goes into the city of Jerusalem and he allows the crowd to read him as the king of the Jews. And we'll see in a bit that the, the, that area was very troublesome to the Romans. And eventually they ended up destroying the whole city. It got so rebellious. So Jesus enters the city Sunday. The populace calls him their king, which is basically a rebellion against the Romans, Roman rule. By Thursday, the, the um, Romans have him in custody and they execute him a day later. Did they have compelling reasons to execute him? I think so. This is, the, the Romans were, they had some good things. You know, culture, we've inherited a lot of their culture. We've inherited a lot of Roman law, of course modified, but we've, heard, we've heard, inherited a lot from the Roman Empire. But you did not challenge their rule and expect to get away with it. They, they were ruthless. And so in 70 AD, they attacked the city of Jerusalem and raised it. They, they did it, wiped it to the ground. A historian says, now well, these figures might be exaggerated, but even if they're exaggerated, Josephus says that 1.1 million non-combatants died in Jerusalem and that almost 100,000 were enslaved. And then the city was rebuilt as had a new name, which I won't attempt to pronounce. But the, so the Romans had a rebellious province on their hands and 40 years previous about Jesus enters the whole city, calls him king of the Jews. Did they have a reason? For killing Jesus? Oh, absolutely. By the way, I said we've inherited a lot of things from the Romans, and we've inherited, unfortunately, their brutality. Uh, they raised the whole city of Jerusalem. We've raised whole cities and whole countries. And as another clip, I think the figure was 70 million people died in the Second World Slaughter, which is also called the Second World War. But 
in the last analysis, Jesus is God, isn't he? Whatever happened to him must have been his choice. So I think that the responsibility for his death is, is his. He freely took it on. And it's, it's, it's bizarre how, number one, he's God, so he must have freely took it on, the, the, the idea of death. And secondly, his death opened the gates of heaven. Now, in any logical religion, you would think anybody who helped his death would be praised. Because if Jesus had come to earth and died peacefully in bed in his sleep, uh, supposedly salvation wouldn't have been accomplished. He had to die. So you would think the people who helped this along would be considered saints. But no, the, for centuries, the Jewish people were hated and cursed and sometimes massacred. It's a tragic story. And I would say that a fair reading of the Bible would say that they were not responsible. If anything, the Romans. The Romans did it because of uh, they saw him as a as an insurrectionist, as as a as inciting rebellion in the city of Jerusalem. So they had the most solid reason to do it. And I think that the account of Jesus before Pilate is well. The gospels that have come down to us date no further than about middle three hundreds, three fifty. Now they might have been written earlier. But that doesn't mean they couldn't have been changed. And the only copies we have are about 300 years after the events. And I think that they were changed because that scene, Jesus goes into Jerusalem. The whole city declares him its king. And four days later, he's in front of Pilate. And Pilate says, I can find no fault with this man. That seems kind of a stretch to me. Anyway, that's my opinion. And I hope next time to get back to some more of a universal theme because this has been particular to uh, Christianity. But if you've gotten this far, thanks for listening.